So in this second lecture, we'll just focus a little bit on how entrepreneurs learn how not to fail. First of all, let's just talk about how human beings process information. Since it's so much about information, how does one process it? A couple of terms, working memory. That's the information that's held in your brain while you're engaging in a particular project. You can't hold a lot of, of working memory. You actually sometimes have to help a discussion. In marketing, they talk about priming the customer by putting certain thoughts into their minds before you engage them in the sales pitch. It's the same idea when you're thinking about engaging an opportunity with a group of people. You want to put the facts back into their minds, into their working memory, the ideas about where the market is, who you've identified as the market, what our individual skills and capabilities are. You want to put those back into everybody's mind, rediscuss them, reintroduce them. Don't rely on the fact they were discussed at the last meeting. Reintroduce them so people can interact and deal with certain situations. And you have long-term memory, which is uh, the episodes that you remember from your past, things you learned in school, uh, other longer-term experiences, information from longer periods of time. Sometimes those take a little bit longer to access. So those are often things that it's good to go and reflect and prepare for a meeting by thinking about various kinds of experiences or ideas or facts that might be in one's long-term memory. That's when you sit down and when you engage with the entrepreneurial team, you have that information perhaps with notes, but perhaps in working memory, you share it with everybody in the group. So everyone has the information, the crucial information necessary to evaluate and find the nuances and the real specifics of an opportunity and how that's embedded in the marketplace and in the environment. And then procedural memory is remembering to do things that you've done before many times. The classic story here is riding a bike. You kind of remember to do it. You haven't done it in years, but you get on the bike and you still remember how to do it. Same thing comes from leadership. When you learn how to run a meeting, you want to make, bring agenda items to the table. You want to facilitate discussion. You learn to do that over time. It can also help you learn how to do presentations. And that's why one of the things that we do is a lot of presentations. So people start to feel they have a sense of how you start, how you get people engaged, and then how you end a presentation. It begins to be part of your procedural memory. So you don't have to think about that before you're getting ready to engage in a discussion. You just sort of know how to do it, just as you know how to drive a car or ride a bicycle. There are certain types of mental, mental shortcuts that get in the way, things that can cause you to make uh, to oversimplify a problem and maybe not, not actually pick up on certain nuances. These are called heuristics or simple rules of thumb. Uh, things that you say, okay, this is, generally, we, this is generally how things work. They don't always work that way, and because of that, one can get yourself into trouble by relying on heuristics instead of doing all the detailed analysis that needs to be done. Heuristics are fine for recalling relationships quickly, but one always has to remember that when you do that, this particular situation may not apply to that heuristic. So you want to make sure you go back and check all of those uh, inferences that you made. One classic of example of this is the availability heuristic, which gets people into trouble a lot, particularly in uncertain environments like entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial opportunities. The availability heuristic essentially says if you have an available solution, then that's the one you keep bringing up as the possible outcome. It may not be the best one. It may only be the first thing that's mentioned. Oftentimes, the first thing that's mentioned becomes the thing you do because of this problem of availability heuristics. For example, you might want to be deciding what to do for the evening. Somebody throws out they want to go see this movie, and all of a sudden that becomes the thing that people talk about. It becomes do we do that or not, as opposed to what is it that everyone would like to do or what is the real, or the, the real best way to get yourself organized for an outing or whatever. Happens all the time. You got to be wary of the fact that a team tends to want to settle on something so the availability heuristic can get in the way. Research that was done here was when people were asked about something that's not all that important to them, like, for example, gardening. They say, how do you know how to garden? They, people tend to have the one book they go to that describes that. 
And that one book, it turns out, is usually the first one that they looked at. Why? Because it gave them the available information, so you follow it. Oftentimes, when you want to find something out, you go to Google. The first thing you look at, you read it. That becomes what you believe. Um, so there's a r lots of risks associated with this particular uh, mental shortcut, the availability heuristic. You always want to sort of step back when it was the first thing and say, wait, what else might be a possibility? Other thinking tilts that kind of come from this processing, and these come out of behavioral economics largely. Um, the Nobel laureate uh, Daniel Kahneman and, and Tversky have uh, came up with some of these research over a number of years. For example, the optimistic bias, we tend to think things are going to be going to work out better than the, than the data would suggest. We tend to think we might win the lottery when the chances are nil for the most part that any one individual might win the lottery. We tend to think that the budget will be met when even though it might be difficult, that the market will present itself. Uh, optimistic bias can cause us to make poor decisions because we overinflate the probability of something that we want to have happen. Another one is called confirmation bias, which has been demonstrated in many experiments where people tend to believe things that support what they want to believe. They believe evidence that others present. If it supports what they currently believe, it confirms it rather than is opposed to it. If you get, if somebody proposes something is, that isn't in line with or would counter what you believe to be true, oftentimes you ignore it and don't even listen to it or say that it makes no sense to you. That's the confirmation bias. Um, and that's a natural part of you want to you don't want to get distracted from what you're going to do and something that comes in that could distract you. You just try to ignore it. And that's where confirmation bias, particularly in uncertain situations like entrepreneurial opportunities, could really get in the way of your success. Related to these ideas is the notion of illusion of control, which oftentimes means if somebody else is having trouble with solving a problem, like a restaurant has been on this corner for the last five years and they open and they seem to all close within six months, I think that I know what they've been doing wrong and since I'll be making the decisions and I have some control over that, I will make it successful. Illusion of control, right? Because there's probably no traffic there. That particular place has no parking or something like that that causes it to not be a good spot for a restaurant. But I think it'll be different because I will be in control and I could make certain things happen when they don't necessarily actually happen. The environment is what it is. The opportunity is what it is. I can't make it something that it's not. I may believe I can make it something that it's not. That's the illusion of control. These are things that can get you into trouble when you're evaluating opportunities or business ideas and you start to just go straight ahead at them. Um, ignoring all this counter information, confirmation bias, thinking that now because we're doing it as a team, we know what we're doing, we're going to win. That's the illusion of control and saying, and by and by this $100 million contract, we're going to get it. So let's keep working on it. Even though people have been sending signals for quite a while, you're not going to get the contract. So the optimistic bias gets in the way and you end up losing all your money and going bankrupt. This is how you have to be careful. This is an information recognition and processing, sharing information, context for how you identify and, ex and execute on opportunities. But all of us, each individual has weaknesses built into the way our cognitive processes work that we have to work around. And that's what we're talking about in this particular